Surviving Mars. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of paradox. There will be challenges to overcome. Execute your strategy and improve your colony's chances of survival while unlocking the mysteries of this alien world. Are you ready? Mars is waiting. Yes, guys, it's another survival planet management, you know, help the colonists kind of game. I've done a few of these, and I have to say, guys, I have to say, bleh. This is the most expensive one I've ever played. This is 34 smackaroonies, 34 smelly ones. This is three Etons in a sky, guys. I'll tell you what I like about this game. I like the fact of the customization and replayability. When you look at the options for this game, there are shit tons of ways you can change the game. And that's gotta be a great thing. For example, who sponsors your trip? Who is the sponsor? Is it Branson Face? I don't know, he's not actually in. Who is it? Is it Europe? Is it Europe? I freaking hope not. Jean Claude Juncker? What the f? Do you want America? Do you want Russia? No, you probably get assassinated. Who is it that you want? Well, it's all varying in the difficulty. You just click down the difficulty, and it what happens is it's the amount of rockets that you get, the amount of starting funds that you get, the amount of sponsorship that you get, all affects that. Now, once you've done that, that's not it. Then you've got to select your commander profile. Are you going to be an inventor, a politician, a futurist, an ecologist, an astrologist, a molemologist? No, I just made that one up. But what are you going to be? Because each of these has big, big implications on what you are actually going to do. And again, they vary on the difficulty, and the difficulty bonuses at the top of the screen all the time. Now, once you've selected that, you then need your company logo. Now, that's just an aesthetic, so you don't need to worry so much about that. But there's this one, which is the mystery. Now, this is so cool, right? Because these are kind of like secrets that can happen to you while you're on Mars. Uh, I don't want to give any of them away, but a few of them are linked to movies and again these affect the difficulty of the game so now that you've done all that and you're actually wanting to get stuck into the game you have to select your landing point on mars and these places are actual real places that exist on mars again these vary in difficulty with events that could happen such as sandstorms like the like tornado -y things uh, there's freezes cold snap there's meteorite showers and you can see by just moving your mouse around the planet uh, the frequency of these events and also more importantly than that the amount of resources and especially water that's in the vicinity of where you're going to land and if let me tell you if you don't get decent amount of shit when you land like water minerals and stuff you, you, you're screwed you're pretty much screwed unless you've got big sponsorship from earth so you can send yourself some extra resources in fact it's essential that you can send yourself extra resources so once you've landed you then have to start colonizing Mars. And this is the great thing, guys. It's not like lots of humans getting out of the spaceship. No, no, no. It's like that episode of Doctor Who where they send an advanced sort of uh, ship full of drones, robots. They, they don't need to breathe. And they set out the basics before humans can come. So they set out a little bit of um, mineral gathering and all of that, concrete gathering. And before anybody starts saying in the comments, there's no wind on Mars, there's no concrete on Mars. Yes, there's a whole section in this game with the thought of that which explains everything about why there's wind and all this, how we can get concrete and everything. So if you're one of these little nerdy people who just loves to prove people wrong, have a read of all that. I don't know if it's true or anything, but it's there and you can have a good read about all of that if you really want to know how and why and the who's and the what's and the do mind if I don't, all of that. It's all in there. Anyway, your little drones set down the basics. They put down the basics, they make you concrete, they get you metals and all that the set up robot control hubs now this is kind of key to the game you have these hubs that can command a certain amount of robots and there's a range that you can see Sector by scan. this blue line around it anything that's outside of that blue lines range your robots that are controlled by that hub 
they, they ain't gonna do shit about it. So you would have to build another hub that's kind of running the lines next to that to expand your base and so on. So that's how you expand in this game. Now all the main stuff that you need to do requires pretty much human intervention. So you need to build a biodome, a dome where you can build houses, homes, uh, engineering plants, scientific research places, you can build uh, gardens, you can build statues, you can build farms, you can build shit loads of stuff inside these huge domes. And the basic domes that you see in here, they get bigger and bigger and bigger as you research more technology. And research, guys, is the main aspect of this game. I've never in my natch seen such a big research tree. And do you know what makes it so cool? It's random every single time all the things is the same but they're in random order i'll tell you why that makes a huge difference because at the beginning it might only cost 500 i'll come into the, the, the currencies in a second but just nod and say yes mac at the minute it, it might take 500 to research the first one a thousand to research the second one and a half thousand for the third as you're progressing up the line and each time you unlock one it shows you the next one kind of thing so that it's in line that you can see what it's going to be and eventually you get up to twenty thousand. now to put that currency in a time frame even if you're on maximum speed which is five times game speed it still takes you freaking ages to unlock a twenty thousand one because generally speaking you might only be earning one thousand a whole day and it's it's like green shit we'll call it green shit it's research research juice so if you're only researching a thousand a day you know and it's twenty thousand that's 20 days just to unlock one tech and you can only research one thing at a time so it's a big big thing so it's very important that um you get the good stuff early i got screwed completely with um a, a, a thing where you mine concrete and there's waste products and you put the waste product on these stacks it's all these rocks this it's just useless stuff however there is a perk that will well it's a research thing that you unlock it's an engineering thing i think where your little droids your little cute little robots they are they can take that waste product and turn it into concrete which has a twofold yield for you because one it empties all the shit out of your garbage dumps which means you can refill them and it also gives you a big boost to your concrete i didn't get that till it was a twenty thousand research and it was pretty shit waiting for it anyway back to the game you have to bring your colonists up via a rocket they don't just teleport so you might have a couple of rockets depending on what profession you chose at the beginning and uh, you then select your rocket on earth and say right i want this rocket up now we're ready to have colonists in i've built the dome i've got self-sufficient with uh, oxygen with water with electricity i've built me uh, solar panels me fans i've got a water extractor it's uh, storing it in this these water tanks i've got oxygen maker it's called a, a moxie and that's storing oxygen in these oxygen tanks so i'm ready i've run all my cables i've run all my pipes i'm ready for my first batch of colonists so you can take 12 on your first trip i think it is and you have to select who you want every person has traits they have some might be alcoholic gambling party animals you know the there's all kinds of traits for these people so you have to choose wisely and you don't want old people that's going to die soon you don't want young people who are stupid millennials Ugh. No, I'm just kidding. you want kind of sensible people so you choose you choose who you're bringing launch the rocket the rocket takes off from earth and it takes ages to get here as well it's so cool then it eventually arrives and you decide where it's going to land you need to land it near your dome all the people skip out come into your dome and then you start giving them jobs you decide what jobs they're going to have it's a great game guys great game youtuber and decide what jobs you're going to have you decide how many shifts is going to be on there it's going to be skeleton crews at first you need to get another rocket up as soon as possible bringing more people but what if you only have two rockets you're going to need cargo you're going to need you'll have probably run out of some important stuff so you're going to need a cargo rocket so you send a cargo rocket up, you buy loads of stuff with your money to put in there, loads of polymers, lots of alloys, all kinds of stuff that you're going to need to, to build these new buildings you're going to need. So that rocket comes up. Now, if you've only got two rockets, that's it. You've got two rockets stuck on Mars. You've got no more. 
you have to fuel these rockets on Mars and send them back to Earth. So you need to build something that will convert water into fuel. Now to help with the research, you've got this satellite view of your planet. And what you do with that is you decide where you're going to scan. And scans can take a while, but you can improve the speed of a scan by building this uh, kind of like a scanning tower. And you may be lucky to find minerals, water, or anomalies. Now, if you find an anomaly, that's like a quick boost to what it is. It's random what kind of anomalies they are, but a lot of them are research based. So you send your little scanning vehicle. You've got three vehicles. I'll come to the other two in a second. And the scanning vehicle goes and scans the anomaly and it might give you a lot of research points uh, and things like that. You've also got another one that controls four. Um, can, can, you can reassign more droids to it, but it starts off with four little droids, which is really helpful for areas where you've left a bit of a gap in the droid sort of communications and you can just plug that with this vehicle. You've also got a transport vehicle, which can go out and uh, mine stuff that's on the surface. It can't mine underground, but it can transport stuff around the planet, which is great again. So there is so much to do in this game and the replayability value is high because of the way the whole game is built. When you start the game, you can just, everything's gonna be different. Every single game will be different simply because of the way that the, the research is set out. I've played the game for 18 hours now and uh, I'm really enjoying it. The, the only problem I've ever had with it was one crash that I had. Um, the game saves automatically as well so you don't lose much progress and it also has full mod support so it comes with modding tools, Steam Workshop included. Uh, the only bad thing really about the game is that it has pre-order bonuses. They're only cosmetic so it's not massively a problem. It's not like Escape from Tarkov where you can buy extra backpacks, bigger backpacks, bigger stashes and have a clear advantage. It's nothing like that though. I would like to see some additional fixes to this game in the sense of difficulty. I'd like to see some bigger catastrophes come onto this game. Once you've pretty much got self-sufficient, it's really hard to, to lose after that point. Um, I would advise you strongly to uh, to build in a difficult spot. I wouldn't go with an, an, an easy setting. I would say you'd probably need the, the difficulty up to over 200%. Get a lot of events going on there and you'll have way more fun in the game because it's way more challenging. It can be challenging. Obviously, there's a massive amount of tweaking you can do on the difficulty system, building in an awkward place and choosing a, a shitty sponsor and a, and a very difficult mystery. So there's a lot, of, a lot to keep you going and it will eat your time away it will eat hours and hours and hours of your time away and we all need games like that that you can just sit down and just shut off from the world and just play and this is one of them games and i'm having great fun with it and i'm going to give it a thumb up if you do want to support the channel you can buy this on green man gaming by clicking the link in the description i'll get a slight commission from it it's actually on special this month uh, they've got a deal on for march when you put it into your shopping basket it knocks 20 percent off so i think you get it for 27 pound or something like that and that hasn't at all swayed my market of this game I constantly thumb games down that are on Green Man Gaming. I just like this game. It's well worth a buy. And uh, I'm thumbing it up.